Okay, good afternoon. It's uh, Roy from Sulfur City Foundry again down here in New Zealand. I'm just bringing to you a cool little tech video. I'm just about to sat, sit down and do work on a couple of sabers. So I thought I'd take uh, 10 minutes out of my day just to show you how well, a couple of methods for wiring switches and two, two methods that I use down here when doing installations, uh, completely depending on um, client preferences. <clears throat> got a little bit of ambient music in the background today. You want to check out my channel. I've got a playlist there of uh, music to install Sabres to, just some of our Sabres. And today we're listening to a lovely 90, 90s classic KLF Chill Out album. Nice bit of 90s ambient for you. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, some of these switches. Uh, when you're ordering new, this is how your switches turn up. They'll be rocking up uh, nice and clean and new. Uh, we tend to use a couple of suppliers here in Sulphur City Foundry. Um, what you can see is, and this is a perfect example um, of demonstrating, that not all LED switches are made equally. So it's always worth, these are two red switches that we sell, always worth double checking where the positive and negative for the onboard LED actually is. When the switches come through, they come with nice full prongs just like so what i'm going to be doing today is showing you two methods for working with these switches um, soldering them and installing them in your saber <coughs> All right. those down there so i'm going to be using a couple of junk switches so they look a little bit shabby don't worry the technique is uh, exactly the same for your nice clean ones so the two different techniques that are uh, in common use today for soldering um, switches is by using the full tab. And this is a technique used by Saberforge. What they actually do is chop the tabs so they're relatively flat to the switch and then solder the wire horizontally on top of the switch there. And we're going to be going through both of those techniques very quickly today. Now I have pre-tinned the end of my wires and all of the solder points on the switch just for this demo, makes a very makes for a short video. If you need some tips on soldering, make sure that you visit our channel and check out the, um, uh, the extra little playlist that we have on the channel and that's called other people's great tech videos and you'll see a video there from Collins lab giving you some awesome soldering tips on how to solder or how to improve your soldering right first off let's do a cool little technique this is uh, if you ever see people talking online that you know all switches should be made with um, you know, nice and tidy with a bit of heat shrink. This is the technique that they're going to use. Um, first off, quick tip for holding your switches. I covered some tools of the trade in an earlier video. These are some of the tools that we use here in Sulphur City Foundry just to keep things nice and stable when I'm not dropping them um, on the workbench. And you can actually find, you can find these in a, like a dollar store. These cost like two New Zealand dollars, which is about a, a buck fifty US. You can get a pack of three of those for that and um, you can find you can grab these and they're, they're good for holding boards there's a little slot in there and you can hold your board horizontally and solder a board which is great but what I suggest with at least one or two of these is you grab your switch and you just pull off these little orange tags which to be honest are going to fall off anyway because they're not very well made uh, what you actually get there is a cool little nook in the end of your clamp which is absolutely freaking awesome for holding onto your switches and your recharge ports and anything that's so large, so big and um, <clears throat> circular. You will find they're a little bit light, so they tend to flop around a bit. So when you're working on a switch, just weigh down the handles and that's nice and stable. Okay, so that's a cool little tip from me. I'm using quite a heavy gauge wire, so 26 gauge wire. I tend to use 28s on switches, but uh, this is just some scrap wire I had around. So what I'm going to do is just show you how to solder that onto <coughs> your switches. Like I said, these two are pre-tinned. And I tend to use yellow wire for the momentary side of the button. 
if I had better eyesight on that scrap switch, I'd work out which of those were the actual tabs. But I'm just going to solder these on. Uh, what I tend to do as I go in, I'll try and heat the wire and tab at the same time. Keep that in place. Um, you can use crocodile clips for this. I'm uh, quite adept at doing this now, so I tend to just do this by hand. If you've got shaky hands, crocodile clip will make sure you get a nice solid joint. <clears throat> okay, so what I've got there are a couple of cool joints on this. Okay, here's another tip. Make sure you keep your heat shrink out of the way if you preload it on your wire. Because if it manages to fall down while you're soldering, it's going to heat shrink in the wrong place. Never mind, I'll demonstrate this on the other pin. So you would have preloaded your wire, or if you've got a, a cut end on this wire, you can slide a little bit of heat shrink on there. Push it all the way down on the pin like so. Okay, now you need to shrink this in. Um, a lot of techs I've seen, they like to come in and use a clean soldering iron just to rub it against the heat shrink and shrink that down. That's a perfectly valid technique. Um, I find it a little bit cleaner to come in with a bog standard lighter. Light that underneath the heat shrink. Just a couple of inches off so you're not burning anything. And you'll see that on the top there shrinks down the heat shrink quite nicely. And then you'll go ahead and you do that with your other three tabs. And you end up with quite um, quite nice, strong, clean joins on the tabs there. So that's one technique of wiring up your switch. Second technique is, as I said, taking the switch. This is a little cheap junk switch I've got. They'll come with tabs like this. Grab your angle snips. And I have to admit, Sabre Forge, for my liking, chopped them a little bit too short. If I do an install, I tend to chop my tabs just a little bit higher. Gives me um, a bit more to solder onto. But nevertheless, let's uh, let's continue. Right, lay down my thing. Take my pre-tins wires. And the way <coughs> Sabre Forge wire their switches, trim that a little bit, is to pre tin the, con pre the contact, pre tin the wire, just quickly go in, melt, melt both, get a nice strong join. That's it. And then coming from the other side, because if you're Coiling your wires, you kind of want uh, it to coil in opposite directions. Simply come in, and I said I try and preheat the end of the wires. I go in and heat the tab so the solder's melted on both. Get it in the spot that I want, and again, got a strong little joint now. Let's give it a tug. Check your joint. You might think that there's not a lot there to actually solder onto, but uh, even with Sabre Forge chopping those tabs quite short, you can actually get quite a nice strong joint. Um, and then what Sabre Forge tend to do, they come in with a glob of, it's either liquid electrical tape or it's an electrical putty. I haven't worked it out yet. Um, you can also use hot glue on there if you want. You would have seen in the previous video. I've got no issues using hot glue. It's a great insulator, and it's uh, you can accurately apply it. And providing you use hot glue in all the right places, perfectly valid and installs. If it's good enough for Genesis Custom Sabers, um, which is regarded as one of the best installers uh, in the community, then it's kind of good enough for me. Right. So then again, you know. Just going in, put a blob of insulation material on top of that, and you're all done. So that's your two techniques. Heat shrink on a full tab, or trim your tabs, and solder on horizontally. 
Benefit of this is there's less protruding into the hilt, so that's great for skinny hilts. Um, benefit of this is uh, it'll satisfy everyone online that moans that this is how switches need to be wired up. Um, funnily enough, I tend to prefer this, and I use this for all the Sabre Forge technique for all of my Sabres. And like I said, for installs, I'll actually ask the client which technique they prefer. Um, I think there's less play. I tend to find these wires are a bit floppy on these tabs. I don't know. My gut feeling is I kind of, I think this is uh, just a little bit um, more stable because, I mean, there's movement on this wire is actually limited to kind of 90 degrees, well, 180 degrees if it goes all that way. But, you know, you can't bend your wire past that. And if anything's going to break a small, thin wire, it's going to be um, a stress fracture. Whereas you come along and solder onto this and it's actually really easy after, after just a few movements to actually snap the fine strands within the wire. Um, yeah, well, there we go. Same on that one. Maybe I'm talking crap. Um, but that's in my gut feeling. I tend to solder like this. So, um, but there's two techniques there. Choose the one that you prefer. Um, think about how many wires you're going to be shoving down your hilt. So if it's going to be quite a compact RGB installation with a lot of cables running from your board to your LED, you might want to free up a little bit of space and kind of use this little Sabre Forge technique for that. Right, that's me for today. Uh, any questions, pop them in the comments below. Um, be interesting to see what technique you prefer and why. Pop those in the comments. Like I said, there's two here. Just pick one and run with it. Um, and I'll be interested to see what your feedback is. Uh, the next video coming up, keep an eye out, should be in a couple of days' time. And that could be wiring, uh, oh, I don't know yet, might be wiring a recharge port and talk you a little bit about uh, how recharge ports work. Or might we go straight for an LED module? Um, but keep an eye on the channel, subscribe, and subscribe button's down here. Make sure you do that. Once you subscribe, click on the alert icon, the little bell next to it as well, and that'll make sure that you get alerted for any new video that hits the channel. Great, that's all from me today. You have a great day. Make sure you enjoy your sabers. It's a beautiful day down here in Rotorua, New Zealand. Um, probably going to be spinning out with a couple of local guys later. Do a little bit of saber, um, saber bashing, bit of choreography, and uh, just really enjoy this cool little hobby of ours. That's it. Have a great day. Bye bye.